It's built on a Windows 7 touch screen, so when I touch the screen, the application activates. You can see on this screen um, that we have one, two, three, four main controls. This control is a screen onto which I can drag information, and that's the screen that one is displayed on the interactive whiteboard or the projector screen. The children in the class don't see any of this information. So this is an application that a teacher would use in the classroom to administer their lessons. And I want you to assume now that I'm a teacher, I've got tutor group 7A, these are pictures of the children I need to uh, tutor, and I want to interact with them. So it's 8.30 in the morning, and I'm going to put a notice onto the screen, first of all, using a gesture, which is a simple drag and drop, that the Year 11 boys hammered Red Abbey 3-1 in the football. Um, I'm also going to put a notice up onto the screen that the other children can see, which says the choir practice is cancelled tonight. And I'm also going to put another notice there, which says there'll be a fire practice in the next week. Um, we'd also like to celebrate some of the children's successes. So Melanie Smith has reached 20 highest points. Let's all give her a clap. And also, in, in addition to that fire drill information, let's have the fire drill is going to be in period one tomorrow. One of the other things I need to do is take the register. Now, this is the register. If I click this button here, this is a XAML control. And uh, it's skinned. This using Windows Presentation Foundation, which is part of the .NET framework. And this is skinned using WPF to give this particular look and feel. And we're using Windows 7 Touch uh, support for gestures and touch points. And uh, I can do things like I can mark all the children present in their morning lesson. And then I could mark certain children as absent. So for example, Sue Berry, if I use a left flick, that will give me a uh, left, left flick gives me an absence gesture. Uh, let's just get rid of these messages here. And Wendy Darling, let's get rid of her as well. Okay, so by clicking this button, it writes it back to the Sims database. I've now taken the register. Um, now let's concentrate really closely on this Ben Abbott thing here. Ben Abbott has fallen out of the A to C group. By 2012, whoops, I've picked the wrong student there. Let me just close that one down. Um, and I picked Ben Abbott. We can see this is Ben Abbott's... Um, what we're showing here is that the attendance marks are quite good, almost 100%. We can see that the class average is here, and he's gradually falling out of this main group, which is the A star to C group. By 2012, the UK government is requiring that all schools produce 30% of the students getting grade A star to C in the GCSE exams that they take at age 15 and 16. Um, so let's drill into this a little bit further. Let's show the subjects themselves, the individual subjects. And we can really see here quite clearly what the problem is, and it's this line here, which is maths. So the maths marks have gone down. Um, and again, we're just using simple XAML controls to plot information onto a graph, but you can see the way that it's been skinned and the way that the designers have worked on this to make it look friendly to the teacher. The main point about this is that the teacher should not have their head buried in the screen, the keyboard and the mouse, but should have uh, ability to just um, interact with this screen in a very simple way and just using touch and gestures. So let's move across to have a look at a little bit more of the information. And we can see some more information about this student which shows he's got good behaviour, the poor behaviour, homework and defiance. So it's not a particularly bad child, but homework seems to have suffered in the past few weeks. Let's have a look at the next part. It says that he has a hearing impairment and has moderate learning difficulty. Well, let's go back and have a look in more detail. And we can see here that we have uh, lessons set up for maths, English, science, science and French through the different periods. Let's have a look at that information. And um, what we can see here is that we've got a couple of marks here, a couple of red marks, and that's for maths. And um, this is because we have unauthorised absences. So we have unauthorised absences from maths on Friday afternoons, period five. And the kind of way the story goes here is that the teacher would talk to Ben and say, we notice that you're falling out of the group, we can see that your maths is suffering, we can see you're skipping maths lessons, what's going on? And then Ben would be in a position to then say, 
for example, well, his parents have been divorced and that's the afternoon that he goes to see his dad. Something like that. Now the main point here is that if the teacher is informed of this kind of information and gets a chance to interact with Ben before he's well dropped out of that group, then that's giving the teacher something that's information which is all there in the Sims database. It's available for anybody. But to surface it in a realistic and useful way which is easy for the, the teacher to use in the classroom environment. Okay, let's close the screen down. You, you need good screens for this. Um, okay, the next thing is to go into an actual lesson. Now you can see we have uh, 16 seconds left until the start of our next lesson. I've just, I've just moved time forward suddenly to 13.30 uh, in the afternoon. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new class and we'll start with taking the register and uh, just simply interacting with the children. So let's have a look what that looks like and we should see the class change. Yep. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear all the notices from my previous tutor group and I can see here information for the teacher that Debbie has a low subject grade warning, Frida swore in the last lesson and Yoji is on report. So I'm going to be looking for uh, Frida and Yoji. I'm going to be looking out for them to make sure that they don't do something wrong. And again, this is something which is very easy for me to do because I can be stood back from the screen. Remember, the children only see this screen. They don't see this information around the outside. Now, in, in modern times, the way that a class is typically run is to give the children a bit of a, a, bit of a brain teaser, just to kick the lesson off, get them thinking. And what we're going to do is we're going to show them this image. So we pl plaster that onto the screen, or we drag that onto the screen, and we ask them the question, can you join these nine dots using only four lines without taking your pen off the page? We give the children a couple of minutes to do that, just to get their brains working, just to get them into the idea of a learning environment. And uh, eventually we say, right, we'll show you how to do that. Let's clear the screen, and drag the dot video up, and you can see the way that this is done. Clearly, if the children are those that think out of the box, outside the box, then there's their answer. Okay, so what we've shown you there is um, uh, a Windows Presentation Foundation um, so screens with rich graphical information and we've also, also shown you the Windows 7 touch interface using gestures and, and uh, touch semantics. Okay, that's it.